Okay, I'd like to have a little fun here. So I'd like to look at at this problem here with a with a kid on a trampoline, right? So I've got a um, 25 um, kilogram child jumping up up and down on a trampoline. So let's draw a trampoline-y looking thing here. And the trampolines, you know, bounce up and down like that. All right, and uh, on that child is a trampoline, or on that trampoline is a child. I hate it when I let you know exactly how late it is when I'm doing this. So he's doing one of these little um, jumping around things like that that makes you um, so happy that you w used to be a child. All right. Um, and so when he's jumping around like that, let's say this is your equilibrium position. Um, you know, when he actually hits, he comes up and does something like that, and then he comes back up and he flies around in the air and then comes back down. You'll remember this from class, right? So here we have a a sin, um, sinusoidal dependence, right? And here we have a parab parabolic um, dependence, right? Um, so this is not simple harmonic motion. But this guy's close, all right? This guy's close. Um, and, and yeah, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to try um, to guess exactly how uh, how high this kid can jump with a fairly simple model. Okay, so what do I know about this? Uh, you know, I know I have a kid, so I'm given a kid. Mass m equals 25 kilograms, right? And I have a trampoline. And it has a damping constant of B is equal to, um, what have I said, 50 kilograms per second. All right. Uh, so what do I do with that? I want to find something. I want to find the maximum height. Okay, and what's that concept going to be? How do I figure out what the maximum height is? It, I mean, that's a pretty good question, right? How am I going to figure out what the maximum height is? Is it just, you, you know, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. How would you figure that out? Well, I'd try to figure it out using resonance. Because resonance is cool. You love resonance, okay? I know you love resonance so much that you're eagerly anticipating the test so you can get more resonance. Um, so, um, for resonance we have this equation here for the amplitude of the oscillations, right, B omega over M squared, F zero over M, and these things are all really, really cool, um, so this you will remember this equation here ends up having a largest amplitude at some spot here, uh, omega naught. Okay, um, so we're going to handle this with this resonance equation. We're going to say that we, if we can um, hit this right, right, we'll be fine. All right. Um, and I'll decide that this guy here is just the weight of the kit. Is that perfect? Is that a great model? I don't think it's a great model, but I think it's probably um, as good as we can get in this class without um, breaking your brain, all right? So it's a pretty good model, not a great model. I, 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 I can think of all sorts of things that I could add in, and it would still probably be possible. I can't say, it's, I can't say that I know it will be possible because I haven't tried it. And until you start making things up on your own and trying them and seeing if they're actually possible, then um, you don't know how quickly things can go wrong. I have made up my own problems. Things can go wrong really, really quickly. Um, 
but it's fun to find that out. So you should make up your own problems as you go along and say, well, what about this? What about that? How can I make make um, this thing at home, right? It's like a toaster, right? You, you know, the toast coming out of the toaster. How can you figure that sort of stuff out? That's for last semester, not for this semester, but still, I mean, shouldn't you know stuff like that? Shouldn't you understand how high your um, toast pops up out of your toaster? What does that mean about your toaster? Right? I mean, you've had that toaster sitting in your apartment for six years, and you had another toaster before that one, and you, and you really, really aren't curious, you're telling me? You're telling me you're not curious about how high that toast goes up, what it means about your toaster? I know you're curious. I know you're going to, you're going to write up a toaster problem for me in the future, aren't you? That'll be fun. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to find um, the amplitude at the resonance frequency. Now, why do I want to do it at the resonance frequency? Because that's where it's largest, right? So that means that's where this is largest, and, and that should, um, if I've got the largest amplitude here, I should probably end up with the largest amplitude here, right? I hope that makes sense. I have the largest amplitude on this part of my, um, of my journey. That means I have more potential energy here. If I have more potential energy here, then I have more potential energy when I get up here, right? Um, there may be some complications here that I'm overlooking. In fact, I know there are. Uh, but this is an easy way to do some stuff in our, um, in our uh, class, right? So we have F0 over M. And we've got this part is equal to 0. So we have B omega over M here, right? So we have F0 over B omega going on there. Oh, this is B omega naught because we're at omega naught. And so everything sounds like, sounds to me like everything's going pretty good. Um, so if we know that amplitude, we can find, uh, let's say, um, the velocity right here, right? We can use that velocity to figure out how high the kid jumps, right? That seems good to me. So, so let's find uh, the initial at omega naught. All right. And that's going to be equal to a omega naught, right? As you'll recall, which means that this is equal to f zero over b. This omega and this omega cancel. So that, that still looks like it's going pretty good. Uh, we should also want to know what uh, F0 is, right? And like I said, I'm just going to use the um, weight, of, weight of the kid, which is just mg, right? So um, that means we can put it all together uh, in 4. And I should have a nice name for this, but I don't. Um, so we have mg over b is our uh, initial speed. Okay, so if we know that, then, then we can use kinematics um, just to find um, v max, right? Or find h max. So we can find, oh, it should have been h max. So if we find h max, we can use kin kinematics. Kinematics tells me that h max is equal to um, vi squared over 2g, right? Um, vi is this guy here. Um, why do I have an extra m? Is that bad? I think that's bad. Hmm. No, that's fine. It's fine having that, that M there because this is kilograms per second, right? So that means, so yeah, I'll have to do it here. So I'm fine. Um, I went off script, which is what usually happens, but that lets me do a little dimensional analysis for you, um, just so 
everything works out right, just to show you that. So M, the mass is big M here, units of or dimensions of mass. G has dimensions of acceleration, which is L minus, LT to the minus two. B has kilograms per second, so that's mass T to the minus one, and this is minus one, which is e which means that this guy and this guy cancel, and one of these cancels with that guy, so we have um, LT to the minus one, which are indeed um, units of velocity, no matter what I'm seeing in my head. All right, so again, this is what happens when I do these things at 11.30 at night. Um, all right, so I have m squared g squared over 2gb squared, right? So that means at least one of these g's cancels out. So we have m squared over 2 times g times b squared. Uh, m squared is 25 kilograms squared. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Down here I have 2 times 25 kilograms time, times 2 um, hertz inverse seconds squared. So I just broke those things up, but that's most, mostly because I want to cancel out these 25 kilograms and I'm stuck with um, these seconds canceling out those seconds, so I have 9.8 meters divided by 8 nothings, and uh, how much room do I have there? Do I have a lot? Oh, I've got just enough. Okay, so I've got something like 1.2 um, 20 is two meters, something like that. There might, that might be wrong. Um, so, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good job, right? Um, so it's a reasonable estimate, right? Uh, if we look at our checks, right, um, the kid hops up around um, four feet which is pretty good. Still, you know, 25 kilograms is a little kid. It's not a big kid, so we don't want our our little kids going up, um, you know, 14 meters in height. They're not they're not going to get to 14 meters. That's huge. Um, so about four feet and about a meter, meter and a half. That that's all right. That's sort of that's a sort of what we expect, sort of thing, right? Okay, so enough battling. It looked looks pretty good. We're looking at one of these fun things that you can do. Um, I encourage you to figure out how to plot this yourself using like Excel because um, this is a fun thing to figure out how to plot. You can use MATLAB, you can use whatever you want. <coughs> and um, I look forward to seeing you in class soon.